Bir dakika. Hello everyone. Before introducing Mert, I would like to thank the organizers, the participants of the program, and actually to everyone who contributed to making this program possible. I really enjoyed our weekly meetings with Mert in the last two months. I hope he learned at least as much as what I learned in the last two months. Uh, Mert is a senior student in Boazici. He had some background on algebraic number theory, so we have decided to do some reading on the theory of local fields and their extensions. We concluded everything with some statements from local class field theory in the last couple of weeks. He will present some portion of what we learned this summer, but he actually covered much more than that. Ten days left. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Mert Akdenizli. I thank to the directed reading program for this opportunity and my uh, mentor, Mehmet Erandulanık. Uh, uh, I'll be talking about local fields and local class field theory. Uh, we will first define what a local field e is and we will look at their ability and extensions. So uh, let's say R is an integral domain and K its quotient field and K star is multiplicative group. We define this map, which is called a discrete valuation, uh, if it defines a surjective homomorphism on K star to Z. Um, uh, it's uh, infinity at zero, and it satisfies this uh, inequality. Uh, choosing row between this zero and one, we can also define this absolute value. And with this uh, absolute value, we get a metric and we get a topology on K. So, we define the valuation ring and the valuation ideal as follows here. Um, and furthermore, uh, the valuation ring RV corresponding to these discrete valuations are discrete valuation ring, ring, which means that they are principal ideal domain with one and only one non-zero prime ideal. And also this RV is called sometimes the ring of B integers. So uh, the, these discrete relations corresponds to normalized discrete relations. And actually there is an element here which has this uh, relation one. Um, for example, if you are looking at uh, Z, Z integers, we can write an element in this form uh, and we define a periodic relation as the power of this K. And we see that if you look at the relation of P here, we, uh, we will get that the relation is one. Um, and we can also define this uh, absolute norm on Q. And completing this Q with this uh, metric, uh, we get periodic numbers. Uh, and its discrete evolution ring is the periodic integers given here. So we define a local field as a field which is complete with respect to topology induced by this discrete evolution. And its residue field is finite. By residue field, I mean that volition ring over uh, uh, quotient by uh, pr uh, its prime line, volition line. Uh, here is an example. QP is a local field because it is complete and its residue field is a finite field. Uh, there is a theorem which classifies all local fields. It says that if, if it is Archimedean, it's R or C. If it's not, depending on the characteristic, it's a finite extension of QP or a finite extension of the field of Lorentz or field with Q elements. So uh, throughout, we will assume that R is notarian, which means that its ideals are uh, finitely generated, and RP is a discrete relation ring. Uh, uh, this actually means that we will assume that R is a dedicated domain. Uh, if we have two dedicated domains uh, and we are looking at the extension, uh, then uh, we can um, uh, get a prime ideal of R1 by uh, intersecting R1 with its uh, with P2. Uh, we say that here P2 lies over P1. And if we have a volition corresponding to this P1, we can extend it to volition of, of P2 such that it's, when we're restricted to R1, it becomes a volition corresponding to P1. Um, so with this, we define this, uh, uh, something called the ramification index. 
We can also define this using value group. Uh, the, uh, 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 we will come at, to, to that in example. And uh, we also, thanks to that, we have a natural embedding of these residue fields, uh, and it's an algebraic extraction, so we can look at its index. And we define this index as the uh, uh, residue class degree. Uh, and if you are dealing with local fields, uh, then we have this uh, equality. It says that E times F equals the um, index of the uh, extension, degree of the extension. So if you are looking at uh, the QP and its quadratic extension, then using this norm, we can uh, extend the relation on QP to L. Um, and he, uh, here we see that this relation only takes um, integer values, but when we divide it by one over two, we can get half integer values. So we see that the ramification index is two in this case. Uh, and the polynomial defining this equation, uh, this extension is x squared minus p. And we, when we pass to the residue fields, we see that x square, uh, it becomes x squared because of we are in fp. And uh, so we have actually um, a reducible polynomial, which says that f is one. It is consistent with the fact that e times f must be two because we are, have a quadratic extension. So we will look at non-ramified extensions first. Uh, L is said to be non-ramified over k if this ramification index, index is one uh, and uh, kl corresponding uh, residue field is separable over k. Uh, if uh, L over k is separable, we, we get this to uh, the condition too. So we can also say that L over k is separable. As an ex extension, we, get, we again look at QP and its quadratic extension. We want a non-ramified extension, so, so E must be one and F equals F must be two. So if you are looking at this polynomial, uh, for this to be irreducible, uh, I mean, we want F equals two, so this must be irreducible in the residue field. So in this case, A must be a non-square in FP, so that we get a non-ramified extension. Now, if you have uh, E1, E2 uh, of algebraic extensions of a field F, we define this set, which is the set of homomorphisms which fix F element wise. If sigma and tau are such homomorphisms, then their uh, composition uh, is also fixed F. So if one of them is in A1 to E2, other than uh, the other one is in E2, comma uh, E3, then the composition is in E1, comma E3. Uh, and the identity is also in this set. So actually we have a category of algebraic extensions of F. Uh, if you say that uh, these extensions are, uh, are normal, then uh, we see immediately that these sets are actually Galois groups by definition. In this presentation, we will focus on the extensions which are finite, separable, uh, and algebraic. So we have actually a category of finite, separable, algebraic extensions. So, if we have a map between uh, these fields, then we can reduce it. To, it first, we can restrict it to relation rings, and reduction modulo the relation ideal gives this morphism. So we, from the morphisms of L to L prime, we get morphisms of residue fields. Uh, this map actually preserves the identity maps and composition. So it's actually a functor from category of finite separable, separable algebraic extensions of K the category of finite separable extensions of the residue field K. So the functor just takes L and sends it to residue field. Now we might ask is, is there is an equivalence of categories between these two categories. No, but close, if we restrict ourselves to non-ramified extension, then the answer is yes. Uh, and it's given in this theorem. The theorem says that uh, the above map that we defined is actually a bijection when we consider non-ramified extensions. And it says that if we have a finite separable extension of residue fields, then there exists a corresponding non-ramified extension, unique extension. So we see that there is a equivalence of categories between finite non-ramified extensions of K and finite separable extensions of residue field K. So uh, if this, uh, L over K is, um, uh, this, we have this corollary, L over K is normal, if and only if KL over KK is, residue field extension is normal, so that the Galois groups are isomorphic. We, get, we have this from this equivalence of categories immediately. So if we look at residue fields, which are finite fields, then we have this 
theorem. It says that uh, in this case, every finite number finite extension is Galois. And, and there exists an element of this Galois group called the arithmetic Frobenius. And it does this, and this element actually generates the Galois group. So Galois group is cyclic. So it comes from the fact that uh, 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 we, um, there is a correspondence. Uh, uh, we know that a finite extension of FQ is FQ to the N by Galois theory. And its uh, Galois group is generated by this map. So we just take this sigma as the corresponding element in Galois group, just using the isomorphism that I mentioned. Uh, and we, we also denote this map as the Frobenius map. Uh, uh, why do we consider the finite residue field? Because local fields uh, are, uh, uh, the residue fields of local fields are finite fields. Hence, uh, finite nine numbered extensions of local fields are actually Galva and it's generated by this Frobenius element. So, if we are looking at non numbered extensions of QP, we, we know that they are in one to one correspondence between finite extensions of FP, but FP has a, this unique extension given by the splitting uh, field of this polynomial. So, QP has a unique non numbered extension of degree obtained by just adjoining this P to the n minus one roots of unity. So uh, we can also look at the case uh, of maximal non numbered extensions. Um, uh, and it, they also come from the uh, roots of unity with N and P co-prime uh, co as co-prime. So now we are done with non numbered case and we will look at the abelian extension, more general case. So abelian extension is a Galois extension such that the corresponding Galois groups are abelian. Uh, as a toy example, we can look at this. We cube Z with a discrete topology. Normally this would be cruel topology, but in a yesterday talk we, we saw that in a finite extension case, these are actually discrete topology. So then the, the term says there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between finite abelian extensions of FP and finite index of the subgroups of Z. Uh, by Galois theory, the proof is by uh, Galois theory, we know that there exists a unique extension degree and denoted as FPN of FP. So we just map FPN to NZ. This is an open in, uh, and finite index subgroup of Z. This toy example actually shows that in order to understand the abelian extensions of FP, we need to understand Z with this topology, which is easy to understand. So our question is, uh, for a local field K, K, is there a corresponding group, which is simple, and we can extract some information about its abelian extensions? Uh, the answer is given by the uh, famous local class field theory, and we will reach to that theorems. We first define uh, this multiplication map, uh, multiplication by alpha map, and the determinant of this map is called the norm of alpha, denoted by this. This norm actually satisfies some good properties. First of all, an alpha is in K star for all alpha in L star. And it satisfies this multiplicative property. So actually we have a group of morphism from L star to K star called the norm map. And the subgroup here and uh, of K star is called the norm sub. Um, let K be the union of all finite double and extensions of K. So the one of the famous theorem of local class field theory says that local crisscross law for any non-archimedean field, local field, there is a unique homomorphism from K star to this Galvo group with the following property. First of all, if, we, if you have a prime element here then, and look at the image, then you have a homomorphism here, morphism. Uh, and, if you rest, uh, and if L is a, a non-normified extension of K, you can restrict it to L and you, will, well, you must get this Frobenius element that we mentioned. And also, it also says that uh, this norm group is actually contained in this kernel. So it actually induces an isomorphism. So you want, if you want to compute this Galva group, you just need to compute this. So the last statement says that actually this uh, diagram commutes. Uh, here, this PK and PL over K are called the local art map. And this, this here, PL over K, is actually an isomorphism. Uh, other important term is the local existence theorem. It says that 
a subgroup of K star is a norm subgroup for some finite double neck tension L of K, if and only if it is a finite index and open. Uh, the theorem actually says that there is a one to one correspondence between this finite ability next extensions of K and finite index open subgroup of K star. So, if you want to understand this ability next extensions of K, you need to find the finite index open subgroups of this K star. Uh, uh, as a fact, if K has characteristic zero, then every subgroup hash of K star is uh, of finite index is open. So. If you are considering QP, for example, it's enough to consider subgroups of finite index. Openness will be immediate. So we will uh, so look at some applications. Hopefully, this will be the fun part. Fun part. Uh, as a black box, we have this theorem. Uh, it's not hard, not too much hard to prove that, but we will take it as a black box. It says that QP star is isomorphic to this. Uh, for p not equal to 2 and isomorphic to this for p equals 2. So we want to find abelian extensions of QP for a given table degree as an uh, application. Uh, this theorem actually comes from the fact that you can write this QP star, an element of QP star is in this form, and units, you can show that units are isomorphic, uh, units are contain this p minus roots of unit and z. So we have this decomposition. As a more down to earth example, let's look at the degree for ability and extensions of QP for P congruent to three mod four. Uh, so we need to find index for subgroups of QP star. The theorem says that. Um, so you can, by a group theory, it's easy to see that an index for subgroup must contain, index for subgroup of QP star must contain this QP star to the four, which you can show that is isomorphic to this. Now uh, we were looking at Q, the subgroup of QP star, which is of index four. So I first divide, uh, take quotient of QP star to this QP star uh, to the four and get this group. And this is a group of order eight. If we quotient it by an order two swap group, then we get an index four subgroup. And uh, this, uh, uh, there, there will be a, a corresponding group to, the, to that such that it will contain QP star to the four uh, and it, it will be of index four. I mean, you just take uh, by calculation. So what are the degree to uh, uh, order two subgroups of Z4, Z2? There are three many, and these are the all subgroups. And when you take quotient, uh, you get uh, these groups. Uh, so we see that actually there are three ability extensions of QP in this case. And using look, uh, actually, what we calculated here is Q, uh, Q star over this norm group. So by local supposed law, actually, what we get here is the Galois groups. So apart from uh, finding the number of abelian extensions, we actually find, found the uh, uh, Galois groups corresponding to them. So one might ask uh, here. Uh, which one of them correspond to non ramified extension? That's a question. So you can show that this norm group maps units to units. Uh, and we have stated that QP the star is equivalent to this and is isomorphic to this, and you, units are in this form. So this norm map uh, will not change the unit part, so it can only change here. And you can show that it, the corresponding index for subgroup is this, which is actually one from obtained by. Zero one here. So this this Galois group comes from the non-ramified one, the first one here. So what about the case where p congruent to one mod four? Okay, uh, it becomes uh, only thing changes here, and it becomes this group z four z four. This is order sixteen. You need to divide uh, quotient by order four, and you should see that there are seven such groups. And six of them have Galois group Z4, well, only one of them have Galois group Z2 times Z3. So one more, as, as last exam, exa, uh, example, you can look at the degree P extensions of QP. This is Q, math QDQ. Uh, so the group is, again, this. You, you need to find the degree order P subgroup of it. Uh, you can see that there are P plus one many such groups. So 
actually there are p plus one extensions of QP of degree p, and the only possible Galois group is ZP. So in conclusion, using local class theory, we can determine the number of abelian extensions and uh, also the Galois group. So actually local class group theory is a powerful tool to understand these abelian extensions of local. Thanks for listening. Here are my references.